Good morning, YouTube. I am very excited about today's video. I'm gonna be sharing with you some of the most beautiful conditions I've ever had for fall landscape photography in Colorado. Now, usually fall in Colorado means bluebird skies and not a lot of moisture. This trip to Silverjack Reservoir was not your typical fall photography trip. We had fog and rain almost every single day, and by the third or fourth day, we were completely drenched and eager to get some of that nice, beautiful light on the peaks. Now, the night before this image was taken, my buddy Joe looked at me and said, I'm looking at the forecast, and I think we're going to get fog, beautiful clouds in the sky, and some nice light peeking through, hitting those peaks. Now, Joe's always a bit of an optimist, so I just laughed him off and said, yeah, is there anything else you'd like to request from the photography gods? But I have to tell you, he nailed it with that forecast, and the conditions were perfect. So what I want to do now is I want to show you those conditions, and then what I want to do is I want to show you the raw image that I captured, and then I'm going to show you the final image and kind of walk through how I approached the edits and all the steps that I took in between to get from A to Z. But that's enough jibber-jabber. Let's go ahead and get started. Well, I've got to give it to Joe. He called these conditions perfectly. I can't think of a more perfect fall Colorado image than this. The nice, cool color in the sky, just catching that first bit of warmth, perfectly balances the light landing on those aspens on our subject. And although we're about a week early from peak color, I think it works perfectly for this image. If all these trees in the foreground were also yellow, or orange, I think it would bring the image too far to the warm side. I like how the center of the image is warm and then the bottom and top of the image is cool, giving us a very nice color contrast. Now this is just the raw image, but you can already see how much potential is here. All that's really left to do is warm it up a bit and pull out some of that contrast in the scene. Now I did want to call out that I opted to shoot at 100 millimeters and shot 10 images from left to right, bracketing two stops above and two stops below. There was a ton of dynamic range in this scene, and I wanted to make sure I didn't lose any detail in the highlights or shadows. The reason I shot at 100 millimeters rather than uh, shooting wide is I did not want to include the reservoir, which really was so low that it almost looked like a mud puddle, and it really didn't add anything to the scene. By shooting at 100 millimeters, I was able to remove the bottom and top of the scene while not losing chimney rock to the far right, nor those left side light beams coming in just over the peaks. And here's the image after applying our global adjustments. Now, when I stitch these images, what I always do is I take the first image in the series and I set the white balance across all 50 images. In this case, that was a very dark image all the way to the right of the scene. And as you can see, the right side is much bluer than the left side. So when I set all of the white balance to that blue, that's why the raw image looks so much cooler than it really did in person. So I needed to counteract that by warming the entire image. Additionally, I have increased the saturation and the vibrance just a slight bit just to make those colors pop, especially in the center of the image. In terms of overall exposure, I started with the highlights and the whites, which I brought back to make the sky just a little bit darker and more balanced with the scene. 
I also increased the blacks so that my darkest points had an almost pure black. And then this gave me the balance and contrast I was looking for, but overall the scene was too dark, so I increased the exposure by a half a stop. And here we have our final image. All I've done at this step is apply a 4x1 crop and use content aware fill to remove that branch that was protruding on the top left corner. The real challenge of processing this image were balancing the colors in the scene without it looking like too much. And that's the challenge when you have an epic landscape like this, it almost feels too good to be true and it's very hard to recall exactly how it looked at the scene and you don't want to overdo it because there's already so much going on in the scene that even subtle changes can have a huge impact on the image. So what I've used is a series of gradient mapping as well as additional masks to refine that color in specific areas to give an overall balance in the image that was true to the scene and still expresses the beauty of that morning. I absolutely love how in this image you see the sun peeking through over these peaks here on the left and the light is just catching every single peak in the image all the way from the left to our subject in the middle and even chimney rock with its fresh snow all the way on the right of the image. I've probably edited and restarted on this image at least a half dozen times. <laughs> when you get the conditions that you're hoping for and happen to be in the right spot at the right time, you wanna make sure you end up with an image that expresses to the viewer what it felt like to stand there. But it's a very delicate balance between ending up with an epic landscape image and an image that just looks fake. In this case, looking at the raw image versus the finalized image, I think I've struck that balance between expressing the real beauty of the scene without overdoing it. Now, will I continue to process this image in the coming days and weeks? Yeah, probably. <laughs> I doubt that I'm done with this image, but I think I'm happy with where I'm at. And hopefully you enjoy the image, but I would love to know your thoughts. That's all I've got for you this week. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Now get out there and make some images. Thank mm -hmm. you.